In this video, I want to show you how to use shift registers to read multiple buttons with the OpenFF board or an Arduino using SPI. In the future, I will try to show smaller features and tutorials like this separately in their own videos to make it easier to search for compared to having these examples buried in longer project update videos. The reason why you might want to use shift registers for buttons is to connect between 8 and 64 buttons over a simpler 5-pin cable like this compared to using individual inputs on a microcontroller. It's also a lot cheaper and simpler than using a CAN bus or faster than using even I2C like these PCF modules I've shown in a previous video. And it also doesn't require a fixed layout like a button matrix would. Thrustmaster, for example, also uses shift registers in their steering wheels. So these steering wheels are also directly supported by our firmware at the moment. And when we take a look inside, we can see that they are using the 4021B shift registers, which are these two components here on the left and on the right side. The 165 type is a parallel to serial shift register. It will latch eight buttons at the same time, which can then be shifted out of a single pin using a clock signal. To understand how it has to be connected, I will show you both a simple breadboard circuit, and then we will also check out these modules I've designed with four of them on a single board and the pros and cons of the whole system. So let's take a look at a breadboard circuit with the 74HC165 shift registers. I have already prepared one here. So the most important connections, of course, are VCC and ground. These are the brown and red wires on the OpenFF board. And the red one is 3.3 volt, goes to the positive rail. And brown is ground, goes to the negative. Ground is also jumpered across on the other side. So the positive is connected to VCC. And on both of them, the negative is connected to the clock inhibit pin, which is in an OR configuration with the other clock pin. So one of these has to be low all the time, or otherwise the clock would not work. Then we also got on the left side, the ground connections on both of the shift registers. And for the data, we got the orange one, which is connected to CS. This is the latch pin, which goes high before a transfer. And this goes to the load pin and is in parallel on both of them. So we are going across with the orange wire and our clock pin is the yellow one which is just the one pin below which is also connected to both of the shift registers. So the data has to be shifted out from the first shift register into the second one. So this green one is connected to the QH output and to the serial input of the second one. And then the QH output on the second one is connected to the MISO pin on the OpenFF board, which is the data input. So to read these buttons with the OpenFF board, as I've already shown in previous update videos, we need to select the SPI button source and enter 16 buttons. So between nine and 16, because we want to shift in two bytes the 74HC165 mode. We invert it because our button will be low when it's pressed and select the S pin one because that's where we connected our latch. And yeah, I have now connected a button to the white input and the green wire, which is connected to ground. And when I press it, we can see that button number two is being enabled in the gamepad window. While showing this circuit on a breadboard might be helpful if you want to rebuild it yourself like this, but it's still a bit bulky and unreliable. So with the help of our sponsor, JSCPCB, 
I made a simple PCB to include four shift registers with pull-ups on each pin into a single module, which is even simpler to get as they offer full assembled boards like this. JLC PCB provides an affordable and fast PCB manufacturing and assembly service. The cheap economic service I used for these modules and previous prototypes of the FF board allow single-sided assembly of 2 to 50 pieces with green and black solder mask and under 3 days of production time. This even includes through-hole components from their catalog. The new standard service, on the other hand, allows all other colors and fully double-sided assembly with tighter tolerances and even globally sourced components as well to build pretty much any design you can think of for an affordable price. These modules can be ordered from JLC PCB directly with the linked production files. Or you can also order them on my store pages linked in the description if you want to get single boards with included headers and support me as well. So before we take a look at the design of these modules, let's first explain the connections, because this might be more important to you. Uh, when we take a fresh module like this, you can see that on the left side we got an input side and on the right side we got an output side. This is because these modules um, can be connected together. So you could take a second one and plug it in like this. And now you would be able to read up to 64 buttons. And the data would be shifted through to the outside. And on the outside, we have the V plus pin. The V plus pin goes to 3.3 volts on the OpenFF board. Then we got the out or MISO pin, which goes to MISO. This is where the data is shifted out. Then we also got the CS pin. This goes to CS. In this case, CS is actually not a real chip select, but it is used to latch the data in the shift registers. I will explain more about that later. Then we got the clock pin. This goes to the SCK marked pin on the OpenFF board. And of course, ground is ground. If you want to connect a button now to this module, um, you would have to connect one side of the button to one of these 32 inputs. And the other side of the button would have to be connected to one of the four ground connections. And of course, the configuration is also similar to the version with just two shift registers. We select 32 buttons, 74HC165, CS pin 1, because this is where we have connected it. And now I have connected this button between pin number one and ground. And as we can see, of course, it will enable button number one. Or when we select input number 16, it will enable pin number 16 and so on. The Windows dialog can only show up to 32 inputs, but um, direct input would support more. You could, in theory, use uh, up to 64 at the moment but it could be expanded to up to 128. So let's take a look at the schematic. It is basically the same way as in the breadboard example. We have four of these shift register modules. The first one goes to the serial output, which is the MOSI pin on the OpenFF board. Um, we have the button inputs one to eight on the first one. And our serial input goes to the QH of the previous module, which then again has the buttons 9 to 16, and so on. And the next module, so we are shifting basically four bytes through all of these modules out of the QH out pin to the MOSI. Our clock pin, as usual, is connected in parallel to all the shift registers. Same thing also for the CS pin, which is a shutdown and a load pin. So while the CS pin is low, the shift register will read the inputs in parallel 
And once it goes high, it goes into shift mode. And when a, a clock transition happens, then it will shift out with every clock pulse one bit of data out of a serial out pin. So because we want to read buttons and um, we need a defined value when the button is open, we also have a row of pull-up resistors, which are pulling up the pins to 3.3 volt when no button is connected between ground and the pins. So now we got the board design. I have also marked the dimensions so you can see where all the holes are. The ground pins are on the edges of the board. So if you want to connect a button, you would have to connect it between ground and an input pin. I chose to put the ground pins on just on the outer side and not add a full row of ground pins to the edge because this makes the board a little bit more compact. And normally if you make a, a button plate, you would wire all the grounds on the buttons together and not um, lay individual ground cables from the button to the board. Depends on how you design your button plate, of course. But uh, this is what usually would be done to um, use this module. Uh, one thing you need to remember is that the CS pin, it's not actually a chip select like uh, in actual SPI devices. Um, here it is really just controlling the latch. So it will not disable the output of the module if the CS pin is low or high. I mean, norm normally um, CS would be active low. Here it's active high. So if you have more devices connected to the same SPI bus, then uh, you could not use this module. <clears throat> you would need to at least add a resistor in series with the serial output. I might add this in a future revision, but uh, even better would be to have a tri-state buffer, which can be disabled when the module is not shifting out. Unfortunately, this is not an actually available at the moment. Um, so I have not added it, but in most applications, this should not be an issue and could be added externally if you really need it. So let's take a look at how it would work with an Arduino. I have an Arduino connected here to this module and um, the CS or latch is connected to pin two, clock to pin three, and the data is connected to pin four. Um, CS and clock are of course outputs, the pin is an input. But one thing you really have to keep in mind uh, with this type of shift register is that the first bit is actually already present at the output if you have the uh, clock inhibit tied to ground as I have in this module. So with the Arduino, uh, when I press the button on the scope, you can see that the lowest trace, which is the data output, is already low even before the first clock transition happens. So when you would sample normally, at the first clock transition, it would actually have shifted to the second bit. So um, to actually skip, kind of skip the first clock edge, I'm setting the clock pin high in the code before the uh, CS pin goes high. So that makes sure that the first clock doesn't have any effect and it's just sampling the pin at the time of the clock. And on the serial uh, terminal, we can see the first byte, yeah, the first bit is actually zero. When I move to the second pin, it's the second bit and so on. And number 32 would be the last one. Yeah, so this is actually working now, but um, this is just because this uh, shift register will already have the first bit present at the output. To make sure that all modules work, which I sent out, I have made a test setup with an Arduino and output shift registers, which 
test each input pin individually and flash a green LED when everything is working. To anyone who supports me on Patreon and wants one of these modules, I will give them away for free if you message me there. And anyone else can get them on my store pages or build it yourself with the files in the Git.